Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. Welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today we are going to be doing a full face makeup look featuring dupes. Let's get started. Welcome if you're new here. Welcome if you're a returning visitor. Thank you so very much for being here today. I am going to be doing this video because I thought, you know what, I think I have gathered a couple of products here that I have found over time. I'm not someone who actively looks for dupes, I just like trying things out and then sometimes I have this light bulb moment where I go like, ding ding ding, that could be a dupe. So this is also going to be sort of like trying to find them in one go, because some of these I really have to still put up against one another as well. Um, but in case you don't know what this channel is all about, then you should know that I love reviewing eyeshadow palettes for you, as well as trying new Essence and Catrice products, but I also love getting the use out of my products for sure, and that's why today there are going to be quite a few products here that, you know, are favorites, or that I really love, or that are recent discoveries, or where I just want to rave about some things that I really enjoy. Um, so we're going to make one half of my face the affordable side with the more drugstore versions, and then the other side of my face is going to be the more high-end thing. So that's the way we're going to play this out. I say I have a full face here, but I don't have an eyeshadow primer, I don't have uh, brows, I don't have mascara, and I don't have setting spray for you. But everything else I do have. So let's just get let's just get to this makeup look and uh, we'll chat about these products as we go along. So is this really a dupe? <laughs> I'm not entirely sure, but I just wanted to show you again in this video these guys here. So this is the OG, this is the Catrice Fresh It Up Primer, which is one of my long-standing favorites. I really love it. And currently in my shop, my stash is the Hydrator Plump and Fresh Primer, also by Catrice. But because these have like similar style packaging and they kind of sounded like they were going to be the same thing, I decided to put them up against already in my first impression video a couple of months ago uh, when this when this product first launched. Um, and I decided to again do a video where I put them side by side just so that you can hopefully see the difference. What I feel about this one, the Fresh It Up, is that really it is just a lot more moisturizing than the hydrator is. The hydrator is more of a gel texture, it's also fully clear, whereas this one has a bit of a blue tint to it, but the Fresh It Up feels more like a moisturizer kind of product, whereas the other one feels a little bit thicker, but they are equally hydrating, I would say. So in terms of what they can do, I feel that the way they wear under makeup and the way they sit on my skin, in the end, is quite similar. So I'm quite happy with this one, but it's still not as good as the OG. So I'm going to put the OG on this side and then the hydrator over on that side. So if you were wondering what the difference is between the two, now that Catrice has revamped their lines once again and they have come out with a new one, I feel that these do something similarly for me. They're nicely hydrating. This is perhaps a little bit more cooling on the skin. Uh, it does seem to have uh, aloe vera, whereas this is formulated with bamboo water. So it must be something in the formulation that's slightly different, but I feel that the way they perform with my makeup looks, it's identical, really. Next up is going to be foundation. And for foundation, I thought, I'm not sure if these are very similar. I think that the Flower Light Illusion is perhaps a little lighter of a coverage than the uh, Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation is. But in my brain, they kind of do something similarly for me. Um, like I said, this has lighter coverage, I think, but on me, both shades are a little bit too dark. So that's why I thought these were the best match that I had going on in my makeup collection for sure. Um, I tried this foundation out in the month of March. This was my new in foundation that I wanted to try. Um, by the time you're watching this, I will have selected another foundation to try. This reminds me a lot of the IT Cosmetics CC Cream, but that's of course at a similar price point as this is. That's I think around the 35 or 38 euro mark, whereas this is like 40 euros. So that's not very much affordable or an actual dupe. Um, so I thought I could put this up against in this video, against the Flower Beauty. Um, because this is a really nice hydrating foundation as well. I really love the formula, but it's always been a slightly wrong undertone for me. And I just wanted to see also shade-wise how these compared, because I feel I can make this shade work on myself a lot better than I do this. 
but may that may just be in my head. So I just wanted to test out and see how this goes. So let me apply the Flower Beauty to this side, and then I'm going to be putting the Charlotte over on the other side. So I don't need that much. Hold on. So that's the Flower Beauty. These have very similar shades for me. That's really good. Uh, and this is what the Char Charlotte looks like. Huh. Texture-wise, they also seem to like look quite similarly once I put them on the back of my hand. Let's see if this, uh, if this works. So this is the Flower. So that's what that looks like before it is blended. Then this is the Charlotte. You can see what I mean with the flower being a little less full coverage. Like this is more of a medium coverage. You can already see where I've just dotted it on with my fingers. So now I'm going to use a sponge to first blend in the flower side and then blend in the Charlotte side. And then we can truly tell the difference. You can see that the Charlotte one is a lot more glowy, but I feel that they are quite quite similar, actually. I think that, indeed, because it's got a bit more coverage, the Charlotte Silbury one does even up my skin tone just a little bit better. Like, I've, I can see a little less redness over here on my chin than I do on the Flower Beauty side, but I don't mind going in with a bit of concealer to sort of hide, hide those things a bit more if I have something that's more lightweight like the Flower. I feel that the shades are really similar too, which I'm very surprised by. Uh, the flower does oxidize on me a little bit and goes a little bit more yellow toned. The uh, Charlotte one I have in shade 3 Cool, and the flower one is L1 Porcelain. But I really think that now that I, especially when I look at it in the viewfinder, like I can barely tell a difference. And also in real life, okay, if you were looking for a dupe, for the beautiful skin foundation from Charlotte Tilbury. Try the flower one if you can get your hands on that one because it seems to be quite similar. And I think it's like half the price, which is good. Next up is concealer. And for concealer, I was very curious to see whether this new reformulated Catrice Ultimate Camouflage Concealer could be a dupe for the NARS Soft Matte Creamy Concealer. The NARS is one that I have used and abused. <laughs> so this is one of my favorite potted concealers for sure. It is a little thicker and even though on my dry skin I don't prefer thicker concealer, I do feel that when I, especially when I tried this for the first time, I was like, I wonder, is this the same? Because this lipstick, or, or this lipstick, this concealer I felt was just a very similar texture to the NARS when I first applied it. So I'm going to just use this on my under eye. Now the Catrice one is a little bit sticky. It feels a little bit sticky and then I'm just going to push it with my fingers like so. So both of these have quite a bit of coverage. That's something you should know. And I love using this just with fingers because you can really use the warmth of your fingers to you know, push the concealer around and really get a nice even finish. Now the Catrice one isn't necessarily my favorite one um, because I feel it's a little bit heavier than most concealers that I prefer, which is ultimately why I also stopped using the NARS one all that often. But yeah, this Catrice one is a really nice affordable uh, potted concealer if that's what you're looking for. It's not as lightweight as the Glossier Stretch Concealer, that has kind of replaced the NARS for me, but since I love this so much, I have always kept it around because I did like it so much. And this I actually did use a lot with a, um, with a brush when I was using it every single day. But today, just because I want to make sure I use the same application, I'm going to be using it with fingers as well. So the NARS is going to go onto the other side, but do you just see what, that this Catrice one really nicely covers my dark circles? Like... It's very inoffensive. It's a good affordable concealer for sure. So this is the side with the NARS and you can see that it's not necessarily higher coverage, but I did find it a lot easier to blend than the Catrice one. The Catrice one definitely is a little stickier, a little thicker, needs a little bit more warmth of your fingers to really push it around. But now that I look at this, I think I prefer the Catrice side. <laughs> I think I prefer the texture that the Catrice gives. It's very nice and glowy still. It really nicely matches this foundation as well. 
feel that the NARS is perhaps a little too, a little bit too stark. So let me tell you what shades I have these in. So the NARS is Light One Chantil Chantilly, and the Catrice is in shade 010 N Ivory. A thing I really wanted to do because I just feel that these are so, so similar. And that is the powder that I have for you today. And the powder that is currently in my Shop My Stash, which has fingerprints all over it because of it. Let me clean it on my sweatpants here. But it's the Kiko Radiant Fusion Powder in the shade 01. Kiko doesn't put shade names on their products, so you're going to have to check the websites to really see what the name of the shade is, because I don't know that. But I feel it's very similar to the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Diffuse Light. So let me swatch these side by side for you on the back of my hand, so hopefully you can see. Also, when I show you these, like, you can just see that these are meant to do the same thing. The Kiko is perhaps a touch more yellow toned. I feel that the Hourglass one is a little bit brighter, but I feel that they have a very similar sort of texture to them. The Kiko is perhaps a little more powdery, a little thicker in texture, but very smooth, very similar texture for sure. Um, and if I, I don't think you can see this if I put them on the back of my hand. Um, but this is the Hourglass and that is the Kiko. And when I look at these, save for the shade of the Kiko being just a touch more yellow toned, I feel that these are very similar. So let me put the Kiko over on this side and then we'll put the Hourglass on that side. Can you tell a difference? Because I can't. <laughs> so if you were looking for a dupe for the Hourglass, definitely check out the Kiko Radiant Fusion uh, uh, Powder because even though I love the Hourglass Powder, I went through two or three full-sized versions of that before. Now that I have the Kiko one, which is $10.99, and Kiko often does 25% off sales, so when I, I know I can get it even for cheaper. I mean, a full-size Kiko one without the sale is already half the price of the mini of the Hourglass I just showed you. So, I love it when I find more affordable powders to like good staple products that I want to go back to all the time. We are going to be talking about bronzer and I already showed you this difference slash similarity in my bronzer collection, but the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer was of course a product that a lot of people were raving about and I love mine. I put this finally in a shop my stash over the winter period. I think it was in January that I started using this a lot more and I just couldn't put this down. I was like, oh, now I understand why everybody loves this so much. Um, so the, uh, the Charlotte one is really pretty, but the Milani Sunlit Bronzer, no, Silky Matte Bronzer in the shade Sunlit is essentially the same thing. Like, <laughs> if you swatch these side by side, I think the Milani is perhaps a little bit more orange toned. Um, so if we swatch these side by side, then you can tell that the Milani is just a little bit darker and the Charlotte one is a lot lighter. However, I have found there is another brand that is manufactured in the same factory as Charlotte Tilbury is and Milani. Guess what? Kiko. Yes, these look identical. This is the powder. This is the bronzer. It's a good thing I keep these things separate in my makeup collection. But this is what the Kiko bronzer looks like. And I feel that the Kiko one is perhaps an even better dupe shade-wise for the Charlotte one. So now we have the Kiko, the Charlotte, and the Milani, which is why when I did my declutter, I decided to declutter the Milani and keep the Kiko because I don't need two dupes for a product that I already love that's high end. But depending on where you live, you may be able to get your hands on Milani or on Kiko a bit more easily. I think if you're in Europe, then Kiko may be easier. And if you're in the US, then Milani may be easier. You definitely don't have to splurge $50 for the Charlotte Tilbury one for sure. Um, this is even lighter than those two. Um, so what I'm actually going to be doing is I'm going to show you the difference between the two dupes. So I'm not going to be putting the Charlotte one on my face, but I'm going to be doing a look with these two. So I'm going to put the Kiko over on this side and the Milani over on this side because I feel the Milani texture wise is the most similar to the Charlotte one. And then shade wise, I feel the Kiko one is better. Um, so I'm just going to put these on. So let me start. Are my brushes dry? I, I washed all of my brushes before I sat down to film this video. Aren't you proud of me? I am. Can you tell a difference? Because I most certainly can't. So depending on what you're looking for, 
of these three bronzers, you definitely don't have to shell out the money for the Charlotte. You can go with either Milani or Kiko, and you'll get a really nice, soft focus, bronzed look. And especially with the Kiko, I feel I can just keep building it and building it and building it, and it will never look too crazy. So I really like both all of these bronzers, but I felt I couldn't keep all of them. So that's why the Milani had to go, because the Kiko has my preference. Just a little bit more. And then we're moving into highlighter. And for highlighter, I have a discontinued high-end product that I love and a drugstore dupe that does exactly the same thing that you can still buy. So what am I talking about here? I'm talking about Becca's Prismatic Amethyst and where they have decided to keep producing Champagne Pop as part of the Smashbox line, this shade is no longer available, which is sad because for fair skin, this is perhaps one of the best highlighter shades that isn't like a stark white because a lot of very light shades were, it was like champagne which was too yellow or golden tone very often for me or a stark white which is not something I always want so this still has some color to it and then I found out that H&M Beauty does the Aurora blush highlighter they're the same thing and I have tried other dupes for the Becca Prismatic Amethyst in the past there was one from Urban Decay called Aura that I really love. It's a more subtle version of this. And also ColourPop's Super Shock uh, Highlighter in Hippo is a great dupe for this shade as well. But those are either discontinued or they are very difficult to buy. If you find yourself online in the H&M app or their website and you check out their beauty range, you should be able to pick this up online if you were looking for it and certain select stores also carry the H&M Beauty line. However, they stopped doing testers because of, uh, you know, the whole pandemic kind of situation. So let me put this one on this side of my face. So this is the H&M one. Or shall I swatch them for you first? That may be good so that we can have a look at the texture. So I feel that the Becca is perhaps a little softer, um, but for instance, if this was your favorite highlighter, if you're fair skinned like me, um, then definitely check out the H&M one. It perhaps has a bit of a stronger glow, but this is the Becca and that is the H&M one. And they, uh, they essentially do the same thing. So let me put this on my cheeks for you so you can really tell how similar these actually are. The Becca. So do you just see that? I think that with the H&M, the way I look at it here uh, in my mirror, I can see a bit more of a pink cast that's a bit stronger than with the Becca. The Becca has more of a sheer base, I feel. But, I mean, these are stunning. They're pretty much identical. They gave the same kind of glow. And especially when you, when you, once you apply your blush, you're really not going to see that difference. And then for blush, we're going to be talking about those two. I need to hold them like this because this is the affordable option and this is the more high-end option that's also very difficult to buy. What am I talking about? This is the M Cosmetics Serum Blush in the shade Pink Nectar. Now, I definitely went for one of my M Cosmetics blushes that is the most similar to one of these that I have. This is the Juicy Pang Blusher in Strawberry from Apieu. Apieu is a K-beauty brand. You can find this on YesStyle. I think these are... How much are these? Like seven or eight euros? And yes, Style does lots of discounts, so you can very often find this at a much more affordable price point. And I thought that these, when I had a look at the two shades I have from the Juicy Pang, that this shade from M Cosmetics was the most similar to what I had already going on. Um, so that's definitely why I went for these. I could have gone for a different shade, but what these are so similar in is formula. They are both liquid, very sheer, serum-y, glowy blushes, and I love these. So the Juicy Pang I actually prefer, and that's to do with the fact, let me take these highlighter swatches off the back of my hand real quickly. The reason why I like this more is because it has like a nail polish applicator, and then you can just brush it to the, brush some of it on the back of your hand, and then it's fine. So that's what the strawberry shade looks like. With the M Cosmetics, the packaging is a faff to use. You need to twist it up, press it, and then, oh, now there is product in there, so that's good. And then you sometimes have product, but you don't always have product. But you just need a little bit of these. So, yeah, these are going to be good in terms of like shade comparisons too. 
I wasn't sure I was able to have a shade comparison. But do you just see? It's like the same thing. It's just the same thing. There's a bit of an air bubble in the M Cosmetics. So let me apply this to my cheeks. And that is the M Cosmetics. Perhaps a bit more glowy than the Apio, but I don't need a lot of glow for my blush necessarily because I, I tend to just, you know, go in with a bit of highlighter and I feel I need to blend this in just a touch just to make it look a bit more even. But I feel that shade-wise and the way these apply, they are just incredibly similar. And the Yes Style ones are easier for me to buy. Uh, with the M Cosmetics order I placed, I had a bit of issues with the shipping of that. Nothing to do with M Cosmetics themselves. DHL was just being a bit of a pain. But with Yes, with, with yes Style, I've never had any issues with any shipping or like customs being calculated wrongly. And with M Cosmetics, I did unfortunately have that experience. So for me, I would definitely buy more of the Juicy Pang, more so than the M Cosmetics. And now for shadow, I thought I could put this to the test. Uh, my theory has been for a while now that the Wilderness palette from Beauty Bay dupes out some of the shades that you get in the Merite. In fact, if you look at the Wilderness and you have a couple of melt palettes and you put them side by side, then color story wise, you can recognize some Merite shades in this, as well as Smoke Sessions, as well as the Gemini. So this is a dupe, well, almost dupe, for a lot of different melt palettes, I thought initially. Now that I tried this palette on its own, I found that these shades pulled a lot brighter on me than a lot of the melt shadows do because where this looks very murky and grungy in the pens, because I have a very fair skin tone, these shades just pull very bright and lose their murky, grungy quality the minute I start blending them. It's just something in the undertone of these shades and the way they have been blended that isn't necessarily well, perfect, you could say. And then with the Merte, I feel that, you know, this is one of my favorite all-time palettes. But of course, it was discontinued very quickly. So what I thought we could do, let me see if I can hold them up side by side for you. I thought we could do a look with the teals um, because that seems to be the biggest overlap. Like the, the reds just aren't as dark in the Wilderness palette and also the navy blues aren't as deep. Um, but I think that these three um, turquoisey kind of shades are quite similar to what you have going on in this side of, of the palette. So that's what I want to do a look with um, and maybe put in Breeze. So put this shimmer in and this matte and that matte. I think that that can be a good look. Uh, just see how it all comes together. Uh, I still have somewhere else to go as well so I don't want it to look too crazy. Um, but this way I think I have a good blend shade like something for the crease, something to deepen things up with and then a fun shimmer for the lid, so that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> um, so let me zoom you in, and I'm going to speed you through this part of the video. Right, so I used the setting spray, I did my mascara, and these are the looks I came out with. I think that they are close. I feel that the Beauty Bay one is much brighter and a lot more green toned than the Melt Merte side is. The Melt Merte side is more that murky teal that I prefer. It's more like turquoisey blue leaning, um, and teals tend to be like a mix of green and blue, and when they skew more blue toned, that's considered a teal. If it's too green toned, it's no longer considered an actual teal. That's what I've read somewhere at some point. Can you do very similar looks with this? Yes. I had a much easier time blending the melt shadows though. So um, that's also why this comes up a little higher because it was just easier for me to blend it up out of my crease. Whereas with this, the shadow very much stays put where you place your brush. So you either get really, really pigmented shades and then it's very difficult to diffuse, which is why I've kept it a little lower down. And as I've mentioned before in the past, the Beauty Bay side is much brighter on my skin tone. I think if you have a diff 
a different skin tone that maybe these like tealy shades can have a slightly different quality to them. But overall, I feel that it creates a very similar look. I don't think if I'm going to wear this out that people are going to look at me and go like, are you wearing different eyeshadow? I don't think anyone is going to be that critical. Of course, I can see the difference, but I do feel that the Beauty Bay, like I had some more issues with skipping in this inner corner part, which is what I usually experience if eyeshadow is far too pigmented and not as easy to blend because my lids are just not as smooth and not as like even as when I was in my 20s. By now I'm in my late 30s, so I definitely have some pulling and tugging if I don't have shadows that really blend very easily, uh, which is why I prefer something like this, easier to blend than this. So here the high end definitely wins. And then I just have one category left, which is lipstick. And here I'm going to do one lipstick on the bottom lip and the other one on the top lip. And I have been thinking for a while now that a good dupe for one of my favorite Lisa Eldridge shades called Velvet Jazz is a shade from Catrice. So this is what Velvet Jazz looks like. And Catrice did a shade called um, Redefine Love, uh, zero, no, 110 from their Demi Matte range. And it's a, also like a really dark red. So I think it's perhaps a bit more brown tone, but that's the Catrice, that's the Lisa Eldridge. Can you tell the difference? Because I can't. And I know that a lot of people know how much I love these Lisa Eldridge lipsticks. And they've been asking me to find dupes and I definitely want to try and do that. But this is the shade that I initially was like, oh yes. But I actually think that Kiko does a lot of dupes for the Lisa Eldritch in their, um, what's it called, Velvet Passion range. They do a lipstick range with 40 different shades, and they seem to do like lots of reds with different undertones, lots of nudes with different undertones. But that's something I still need to, like, I need to put that theory to the test. So let me put this on my bottom lip. I don't think you can tell a difference. Can you? <laughs> so the Catrice one is predominantly on my top lip and the Lisa Eldridge is on my bottom lip. I don't think you can really tell a difference. So if you were, I'm not sure if you can still buy this Catrice lipstick though. These have been discontinued. So it may be difficult to get your hands on, but I think it's definitely a shade dupe. And this is also a matte formula and the Lisa Eldridge one as well. I don't even think it's lo looking that crazy with the, um, with the eyeshadow. What do you guys think? So there you have it. That is my full face of dupes for you guys. I really hope you enjoyed chatting about makeup again and seeing how all of these more affordable slash more high-end products compare. I think that I have a very similar look going on. What do you guys think? I definitely think that this again goes to show that you really don't have to splurge on makeup if you don't want to. You can find really good makeup at a more affordable price point and create a very similar look for sure. My favorites here are definitely the Juicy Peng Blush, that Kiko powder. Um, I'm definitely now going to use that Flower Beauty foundation so much more now that I know that it's so similar to the Charlotte Tilbury one for sure. Um, yeah, I think, I hope this video was helpful and that it helped you to figure out what products you might want to buy into if, in case you were looking for any of these or if you had questions about any of these. And without further ado, please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. And I hope to see you again soon. I think next month I want to do a full face of all of my favorite drugstore makeup. Because I definitely think that warrants a video too. So I hope to see you in my next video. Take care everybody. Have a great day and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye!